Hi everyone, welcome to my talks and I'm so excited to be here at Spread.it to discuss with you about teaming and view applications. So if you already are familiar with Vue.js and developing in Vue applications, this talk is definitely for you. Just sit back and relax and enjoy how to team in dynamically. If you are new to Vue.js, I hope this talk is also will be a great start, starting point for you to check it out. Uh, how awesome view is and how awesome it team dynamic teaming. Okay, so let's start. But before we but, but before we start, let's talk a bit about myself. I'm Maya Shavin. I'm a senior software engineer at Microsoft. I'm also an open source contributor and maintainer for Storefront UI, which is the UI library framework for e-commerce. It allows you to set up um, uh, e-commerce stores uh, applications. Um, using Vue.js storefront UI and Vue storefront at the easiest um, and most straightforward. I'm also an author and I'm a Vue.js Israel community organizer and I'm an international speaker. I'm also a GD, I'm MD, and NUX ambassador. I know that's a lot of titles. Uh, I'm a NUX ambassador. Uh, NUX is the progressive framework for server side rendering, single page application rendering, everything was now based on Vue.js and it's awesome. So check it out. Okay, let's start with our first questions. What exactly is teaming? So, Teaming, when we talk about teaming, is actually the whole process of designing and constructing styles based on a specific idea. So we have an idea, we build on the design, the styling, the image, the icons, based on this in order to create and to help user be able to memorize and recognize this specific idea, this specific team instantly. And from that, user, whenever they see something familiar, they know in the brand straight away, this is how the, this is how the brand should look, this is what the team should be, and the brand look and feel can be achieved this way. Some examples for teaming, uh, very good for teaming is um, Disney World, or a Christmas team for a website where you have um, a very festive team in with a jingle bell, a, um, a, a tree, and um, Santa Claus, and so on. Or just normal purple, purplish website like my website, or MacBook. You know MacBook, right? So MacBook, Mac OS have a very specific team that cannot be mistaken with any other or a operation system such as Windows. <laughs> so that is teaming in general. So what is teaming for applications? For web applications, teaming is about the UI, which is colors. Like you have a logo, you have a set of palettes based on the colors of the logo, based on the look and feel your brand want to be. Typography. Anything related to font size, font family, spading, margin, everything that allow users to instantly know this is the branding. This is the team of your brand. Icons. Icons is very important because from the icon is the branding icons also. Let's say Facebook have a different set of icon, Amazon have a different set of icon, and so on. Or you can use icon like material icon, um, you can use from awesome icon. Each icon set are very different from each other, a little bit too very much. It allow user to know, hey, this is the icon of Facebook, this is the icon of Amazon, this is the icon of Airbnb, and so on. So and of course, teaming is not just the three concepts. It's not just about color, typography, and icons. These are the three main points of teaming, but there's a lot more about teaming than this. When we talk about teaming, we talk about static teaming and dynamic teaming. So what's the difference between them? Well, first of all, they are very similar in a way that static teaming are also based on configurations. Default, um, the default configuration for dynamic teams also need to be provided because both of them need to be deployed to the user um, to use in the browser. But static teaming on the style 
uh, provided at configurations by the clients before deployment, which means the client can send you a set configurations of um, bluish palettes or font size, different font size, different icon, and everything who have to be um, pre-processed. And by the time it deployed to the client side, this application already contain all the styling that provided by the by your client and the user the browser user already interact with the specific type and team meanwhile dynamic team means everything is generated in runtime so which means and uh, you can build something with the default configurations but with ability to extend it on the client side, on the browser side, user who interacted, user can choose to make the fonts larger, can choose a different font size, can choose the uh, light mode or dark mode or different color for the applications. It's all up to user. Which means in the other way, static teaming provide a very limited customization. Uh, it's not a very limit to be exact. It's actually provide customizations, but the two different kind of user. The customization static teaming provide is to your direct client who will use the applications and wrap it with their own style and send it to the browser for their user. So that's it, the limit customization. But at the end of the user, they don't really necessarily to have the ability to customize anything on the browser side. Meanwhile, dynamic teaming, you leave the customizations in the hand of the actual browser uh, user. The user will play with it, will change it, however, at their need during the sections with your applications. So in short, touch static teaming is you provide a bullet play which contain all the components, uh, layout, everything needed to make it into a workable applications. And you receive uh, configurations from the client and shape it into client's need. Think about it, it's like component library. You have a set of uh, default configurations, but client can take it and shape it and change it into their own needs. But the layout is pretty similar, so you can see here you can have a website with um, red color, a little bit of dark, a little bit of um, different font style, or with, uh, blue or something else that the look and feel will be targeted, will be customized according to the client need. Dynamic teams, in the other hand, the teams is loaded based on a runtime configurations. It's all depend on user choice. For example, I have a um, Pokemon applications. What it does that I fetch a list of uh, Pokemons. The list is, can be more hundred, can be more than that. And then user on the client side, user will be will choose a random uh, Pokemon. And when they go to the Pokemon view, he can, the view will be rendered according to the Pokemon he chose. There's no pre-telling what kind of Pokemon it is but the, the the page have to render the color according to the Pokemon's characteristic, Pokemon color, main color. Let's say you can choose um, a slow roll, which is a water type of Pokemon. And then if you just choose a dark mode or light mode, it will change the background color accordingly. So this is dynamic team. So when we talk about dynamic teaming, in order to do that, we have three main concepts. The first thing is single and consistent team provider for component. In order to get a dynamic team without so much effort and work on your, on our side, the developer side, we need to create a team provider for components, which is a one center consistently, one change in the team provider or team, manage, uh, team managers will apply to all our other components instantly. And a change in any component about styling theming should be able, uh, the component should be able to communicate with CSS on runtime and change accordingly without a lot of in impact on the performance. And of course, 
being the dynamic team in, you need to be extendable with all the style. Because if not, who will be able to use it? Because people still want to extend it. People want to take your code and extend it, right? So let's talk about the technique. How can we achieve dynamic team in concept that we were talking about? Okay, for single team provider, we have state management. You can use ViewX, you can use XStay, you can create a store from ViewX, anything you want. You can even use Redux, Mobix, however you want. You can make a single team's uh, store that in here, like in this example, I have a store that can uh, contain the team for dark mode or light mode. Or you can use provide inject pattern that provided by a view uh, by default. Or you can use team provider provided by the library view style component, which is the CSS and JS library, um, which are based on style component for React. Yeah. So view style component uh, is, is allow us to write component with CSS uh, inside JavaScript. That's the concept of CSS and JS. And this means that the component will have a set of CSS encapsulate, sorry, isolated to that specific component and no one else. So there's no such thing that you write a CSS class and it will have happens in other class by mistake because the naming convention is, can be overlap each other. And here you can provide team providers the component and you can set uh, wrap them together in um, in the template, put F on your content, your application inside the team provider, pass the team, which is the configurations, to the properties, um, to the props team in the team provider. And here you go, you have the whole team. Or you can have a layout with dark mode and so on. And in order for the team to work, you need to have one single configuration which is a file or a multiple file is up to you, but configurations will tell what is the default team for your applications for the team provider to start. So here I give in this example, I define dark mode and light mode. I assign some background color, so some text color and some title color and so on. But now we have the team management, the team provider, how we communicate with CS on runtime. Well, for communicating CSS, there's so many ways uh, you can ask it the DOM uh, style property uh, or more efficiently, you can use view style component, like I said before, it's allow you to write CSS in JS and because it will use a virtual DOM, it's ha it's will make sure that it's communicate CSS on Renta without great impact. What it does in the background is that it combines the component, extract the styling that you provide to the component in, into a separate style sheet, generated, uh, it generates a random class name attached to this specific component and inject the style sheets to the DOM, to the, to the browser DOM. And this way, the class name is unique because it's generated randomly or you can set the prefix and suffix for the class name um, and you make sure that your component is tied to this class name only and it's always be the, um, the dominant class and uh, dominant style for the component and it will not affect other components uh, outside of that. Okay, CSS variable. To, in order to communicate CSS, you still need to use CSS variable in certain case. Why so? Because it's a powerful CSS uh, features provided by the browser. It's support by browser, it's built in, it's native, and you can change the color without directly access the, the DOM style properties and can cause repaint and replow un, uh, unintentionally. Polish is something I'm used for creating a palette, a color that is a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, according to how much construct you want. Okay, so how do we do the encode? So here, you um, view style component will give you a method called style. This style receive um, it, it, will, it will be the syntax is a bit um, kind of 
combined between the normal function and string template. And I have a dark layout, like layout from layout, in order just because I wanted to make sure that we separate the layout for dark mode, for light mode. And I'm using lighten for from polish to calculate the light mode color. And I create info sections in which I'm using style. I pass the uh, HTML element con sections. I pass the item prop and I pass the string, um, the set of CSS styling using string template. This string template will be translated into the proper CSS styling and injected to the as uh, to the <laughs> to the browser. And so on, you can see here I have props, so I get the team color from the prop and I apply it to the border. Similarly, I have CSS variable page background, I, have, I apply it to the background. And so on, we have section tab with a similar uh, ID and style view, which if it's a dark mode, then I render the dark layout, if it's a light mode, I render the dark light layout, and so on. And in the template of the Pokemon view, I wrap all the content inside the style view, pass the color to the team color, and dark mode to the dark mode. Two of these, the color and the dark mode, I got it from the team provider that in the previous uh, slide we talked about, that um, the team provider already will inject it to all of the, the child component and then you can take it and inject it back to this type view and so on when for section you have inject the colors to you attach the color you bind the color to the team color and the sections tab also the color to the team color as uh, in color and that's it you'll get the view that you want so next question is how we do the extendable style so for extendable it's very important because style component is very 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 isolated so you cannot really um, you don't know what is the class name in order to override the style right that the class name is generated uh, randomly unless you're going to provide that the class name but again that's not recommended so for style component you can actually use the component itself and the component itself have the function called extend and you can just pass the string of CSS properties that you want to override and create a new component out of it. For example, you have a style button. Here we go on to create a tomato button from the style button. We're using extend and put a color tomato. And that's it. Now, whenever, for example, if style button have color blue, then tomato button will generate a style sheet where the color is tomato apply back to tomato button but only tomato button anywhere you use style button in the whole application the color still blue that's all so i know now everyone is very is wondering style component is that great but i want to use with tailwind css right because tailwind css is great you have the whole utility class you have paid in you have margin everything for class so you don't really need to do a, a lot of choice Tailwind CSS is awesome. I love it. I also want to learn how to use it with style component. Well, for style component, for view style component, we need to use um, a little bit of workaround. Um, first of all, we need to install Tailwind, of course, set the Tailwind configurations, and then you need to use Babel uh, macro for Tailwind configuration. You need to define it. And then you can use the package tailwind.macro, which have uh, expo uh, an API called TW. And sorry. And this would, would you can pass the string of the class name that uh, the tailwind class name into this function, and it will generate for you the class, the proper uh, CSS styling applied to this specific class. And this is how you got the style title from the, with the text 500. Unfortunately, I don't know the, uh, the, um, the situation at the moment, but the last time I checked, it doesn't work very well with view style component. It works very well with React style component. So if you check it out, feel free to tag me on Twitter to tweet it out 
uh, or to, uh, to send me a private message, I would love to know what the status at the moment. Uh, and if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask me on the Q&A sections after the talk. So before we finish, there's some resources I want um, to introduce to you in order to get dynamic teaming up and running easily. First, view Start Component, check out the package. It's awesome. Start Component is good for teaming. Dynamic teaming is help you to organize your code a little bit. Yes, it's very hard to understand um change the habit of writing CSS in CSS file and CSS in JavaScript, but try it out. Color palette generator is the generator I wrote several times uh, several months ago that allow you to upload pictures, a logo, and it will generate for you the four main colors with Tailwind's um, palettes generated. So you can actually copy the code and paste it in Tailwind configurations file and can use it in, in Tailwind CSS. So check it out, code um, collagen.dev. And Polish is the great uh, NBM package that allow you to calculate the colors with the specific um, contracts or a percentage of a gradient and transparent and so on. So do check it out if you want to make sure that you create the proper contract color to your text. Uh, Xday and Vuex for create team system. I personally like Xday very much and Vuex very much. Vuex in one hand is backed by Vue core team and they do a great job maintaining it. Xday in the other hand is, is great, it's a new concept and it's great to maintain your UI um, the UI more UI states. Let's say you have a loading, you have a um, toggle button machine, and it's perfect to, for team um, management because it can help you to manage what team is you want to use and so on across application. It have a very good visualizer, so try it out. And if you into what I just say just now about Tailwind CSS and still style component, especially uh, view style component, check it out. It great article. Uh, well, again, uh, unfortunately, the article is based on React style component. So I hope if you do check it out, if you do find interesting and find a way to work with view style component and Tailwind CSS, please, please tweet it. Um, tag me, send it to me, and I hope there will be someone writing an article similarly with style component with Tailwind CSS in view. And before we finish, let's summarize what we've been talking so far. So in order to create dynamic teaming, first you need to create a single team system using Vuex, Xday, anything, or just team provider that will, uh, will provided by view style component and you can use um, normal, you can build your own either, but make sure that you have only as one uh, team system, one state, machine, one state management system for your team in across the applications. <clears throat> Whenever you can use viewing CSS property. Proper CSS property, CSS variable is powerful. You don't need to use extra dependencies such as SAS for pre-processed styling. Now you can use CSS variable to actually get the styling adapt to um, that, that dynamically and is supported by all the browser. One less dependency, better uh, performance. And if you want to use dynamic theming, I really strongly recommend you to use view try as uh, to try view style component for styling because it's really, it's really go forward to the concept of isolate component dynamically changing CSS according to the prop and it help you to create a more uh, organized system. For example, I think Chakra UI will build on a uh, style component concept in view. So check it out. And lastly, before, before, before all the three things that we were talking just now, please remember, plan ahead. If you plan to have teaming support, plan your teaming configuration, plan your teaming system, 
before everything else, this is the better way to make sure your course will be in high quality and you will we will save a lot of time in trying to um, develop in a, or refactoring or fixing bugs or any new features. So this is highly recommended to start planning before developing. And that's it. With that, we wrap up our talk today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the Q&A sections after the talk or just tweet me as Maya Shivin. Uh, also, if you um, want to follow me or to check out my articles, feel free to go to mayashavin.com. I normally write about my, um, my experiment and any technologies for front end that I found interested, interesting at the moment. So thank you for joining my talk and hope you like it. Bye-bye.